Machine Gun over this texture like grain effect that Cole Bennett does in a lot of his music videos. He primarily does it to like bridge the gap between like a story that he's telling or just use it as an extra scene to like kind of cut away at and make the music video a little bit more interesting. This effect's a little bit more conceptual and he kind of does it differently in each music video, but it's a really common theme that he does. And I think it's a really good skill to learn how to kind of create these scenes in your music videos. So I'm gonna be taking a stab at it, kind of showing you how I would do it personally if I were to add it into a music video. It's gonna be a little bit different than all his music videos, but it's gonna be taking the same concepts using probably a lot of the same effects that he's using. If you're new here, what's good? My name is Brian, I make music video tutorials here on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. I upload three times a week. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and it's free. Also, if you could do me a favor and like and comment, it really helped push my content to other people that want to see this, and it would be a big favor. Also, if you want to level up your music video editing game and support the channel at the same time, you can go ahead and check out my website down below. Check out my packs and presets. Best way to support the channel, and it's greatly appreciated. But yeah, that's enough talking. Let's get into the video and break down this effect. So now that we're in Premiere, I just want to show you the clip that I'm going to be referencing and kind of an example of how he bridges the gap between storytelling using this effect. You can see YTB Trench is performing here and it would be a pretty long performance of the same scene. So he cuts away to this little cutaway with a texture. And I think it just bridges the gap really well because otherwise this performance scene would be taking a really long time before this happens right here. So you can see how that kind of breaks up the gap between this pretty long performance scene that's stationary. And I'm just gonna be showing you kind of an example of what I thought would look cool in a music video using the same general concepts, but kind of putting my own twist on it. And that's kind of what I came up with. It's pretty much the same thing where he has two pictures flash and kind of zooms in. And then I, I went with more of like a cartoon look, but it still has the grain, it still has that textured look to it, has a little bit of motion blur, all that stuff. I'll be going over everything and kind of different ways you can tweak it and make it unique for your own music video. So the clips I'm gonna be using are not actually from that Trench Toxicity music video. I'm actually gonna be using the Run It Up music video with Ty Fontaine and Fago, shot and edited by Nirvan. And the reason is because I think it's easier to pull off this effect when you have a solid color background. And this is the first one that came to my mind. If I were to be shooting for this effect, and I'm pretty sure this is what Cole does, is he just shoots in a pure white room or with a green screen. So that's the clips I'm gonna be using here. So to start off the effect, I just want two screenshots that are still images, and then I want the clip to play so it kind of flashes two pictures and then the clip. So to do that, I'm gonna take a screenshot of some spots that I want the effect to take place at. So I'm gonna name this one too because it's gonna be the second one to pop up. Then I'm just going to save it. And then I'm gonna drag that still in and I'm gonna make it five frames long. Go back five frames and drag it up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna find a frame in here that I want. And right here, it looks good to me. So I'm gonna take a screenshot and name that one because it's gonna be the first one to pop up. And then drag that and also make that five frames long. So now the transition is gonna play like this. And I'm gonna cut one frame off this because it kind of plays that frame twice, I noticed. And when we add the texture in and the zooms and all that stuff, it's gonna be a really cool transition. And then like a textured, rainy look right here. And if you wanna follow along, I have my project files available on Patreon. So if you wanna like check out what keyframes I did exactly and stuff, you can go ahead, support me on Patreon and you get the project files. So if you wanted to copy and paste the effects that I'm using here, you could go ahead and do that as long as you have Sapphire. By the way, before we start adding a bunch of different effects. I'm gonna be using a lot of Sapphire plugins. I'm not sponsored or anything by them, but it's just what I found easiest to do this transition. So if you don't have Sapphire, I'd go ahead and recommend and get it. I use that plugin all the time. And if not, there's probably similar effects that you can find for free that will do the same thing. So just kind of pay attention to the name of the effects and get the free version. So the first effect to add on to your clip is gonna be Posterize. I'm gonna add on Sapphire Posterize. There's also one that's built into Premiere, but it just doesn't have as many options and it's not exactly what I want. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Sapphire Posterize. And then I'm just gonna tweak this a little bit to where it just kind of something like that. We're always, we're gonna go back and tweak this a lot once we add some more effects on. So I'm just gonna basically do a little cutout where it looks a little bit more cartoonish. And obviously when we add a lot more effects on, it's gonna help it out a lot. The next effect I wanna add on is Halftone. This is gonna give the effect primarily its color and also that's gonna give it a lot of its texture right off the start. So to make it more what I want it to, I'm gonna bring up the dot frequency until we get a bunch of these dots. Maybe something around 300-ish for me looks good. It's all gonna be depending on what you think looks good. I'm gonna make the dock sharpness a zero. So it has a lot more of a harsh kind of grainy look. And then I'm also going to bring up the dot width and just play around with the angle. So it's not like a perfectly circular 
dot. And then just play around with whatever angle you want. You can see it kind of on diagonal or whatever. And then I'm going to change the color of the white to whatever color you really want the product to primarily look like. There's gonna be a little bit more tweaking a little bit later on but this is going to be the general color of what you're going to want. Obviously, it's going to be a lot less flat of a color when we add more effects on, but I think this like brownish is kind of like the style he normally uses. I'm going to do my take on that. And then if you want to change the black color, you can make it maybe something just slightly brown if you want. I think it adds a nice look, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. The next thing I'm going to add on is something that's not, not really necessary, but I think it adds a little bit more dimension to the effect. And it's this micro texture effect. When you first drag the effect on, it's gonna look like some kind of water almost in my eyes. And I'm just gonna go ahead and change the octave down a little bit. So it just adds a little bit of like just color difference. And that's pretty much all we're gonna use it to. If you go ahead and turn it to overlay, you can see it adds a little bit of this effect. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color too. So the darker spots you're seeing here to like a kind of like a lightish gray and maybe a little bit lighter actually. It basically just adds a little bit of depth to the video and kind of has a different color in some spots. And it'll also move around throughout the video too, which I like. After that, I wanna go back into the posterize and change around the posterize until I see tie a little bit better. I want it to be more like footage and less posterized for right now. So that looks good to me. And then I'm gonna add some Gaussian blur on just a little bit to kind of soften the overall effects of everything. And when you're adding these effects on, just be sure to take note of the order of everything because Basically, the higher something up is in the effects control area, it's gonna do it first. So if you go ahead and change it around, for example, I'm gonna add the sapphire grain static on here and then change the color amplitude to zero and then the black and white to 0.2. Depending on your clip, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, really depends on what the kind of footage you're working with. It's generally pretty low and I'm gonna use the black and white one instead of the color. And now we can see if we bring the Gaussian blur below that layer, it's gonna add the grain first and then it's gonna be blurry. So it has a lot more of that roughened edges look. And if you drag the Gaussian blur above, it's gonna blur and then the grain's gonna be added. So it's all personal preference. Just know that the order of all these effects is really gonna affect the overall final look. Then I'm gonna add Sapphire Flicker on. If you want it to affect what it's posterizing, you can drag it all the way above posterize and then bump up the amplitude just to see what it's doing. But you can see that now it's changing what it's affecting because it's making it brighter and lighter. So the posterize is taking account into that. So if you want it like more of like a intense look with like an upbeat song, that might be something cool. We'll actually go ahead and use it for this one just to kind of have a difference between these two videos. But the last one I did, I just had the flicker all the way at the bottom. So it wasn't affecting dark and light areas of the posterize. And then you can go ahead and tweak everything you want I'm gonna add a little bit more of that posterize back in, actually, so the layers has the texture in the background. That way, you can't see as much of Ty, it's himself, but you have that cool texture on the background. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and mask out Ty, add some detail back into him, or do a rotoscope and After Effects, all these different ideas. I'm just giving you the rough concept of all these effects. And then let's go ahead and copy and paste all these effects onto the still images. And sometimes when you copy and paste, it actually flips the order of all the effects. What I'm doing is I'm just dragging them, flip the order. And this time I'm gonna bring the flicker to the bottom of these still images here. Make the amplitude maybe something like 0.5 and the frequency like 75. And I'm gonna copy, paste that to the other one and remove the flicker at the beginning. And then for these ones, I want it to be a little bit different color and look than the video plan. So to do that, let's go ahead and go to pop, go to posterize and make it a lot more intense. So I'm just gonna bring the amount of posterize to one on each of these. So you can't see as much detail between the clips. Let's go ahead and play that. And then let's also go to the halftone. I'm just gonna change the color of everything a little bit, make it a little bit whiter. Maybe I have it slowly shift between the two clips. So this one's like the whitest layer and then that's a little bit tan and then this one's really tan. That's looking pretty good. What I'm going to go ahead and do is drag these layers each up one and to get that kind of paper like cartoon looking effect here, there's one last effect we have to add on to kind of sell that look and it's called Texturize. It's a built-in Premiere effect. I'm gonna drag that on all the way at the beginning actually, all the way before Posterize even. And then what we need to do is bring in some kind of paper textures. I'm gonna be using the paper rips and folds from my V2 of my Ultimate Texture Pack. I'll have it linked down below if you're interested. But basically just grab some kind of paper texture that you want and I'm gonna drag it for the length of this clip. So the first five frames for this clip. 
go to effects controls and then go to texture layer and basically whatever layer the paper layer or whatever texture you're using is on so for example video layer one you can see by v1 you can kind of click on these areas and it'll make it easier to see you just need to change the texture layer to that so let's go to video layer one now you can see we already have a little bit of that look and then i always just go to center texture that way you can see it a little bit more and then bring up the contrast and you can play around with the lighting direction depending on your clip some might look a little bit better and then i'm going to add one other one for this let's go ahead and do this a lot of checkered one i'm going to copy and paste that texturize effect onto this and drag it to the top you can see the different order of everything is going to change the look of it it all the way down here is going to look different and even if you bring it above post rise it's going to look different but i personally want it on post rise for now and depending on your clip you can change all these different settings but I think center texture looks good. And then I'm gonna highlight these two first ones, right click and go to nest. I'm gonna name this one and I'm gonna do the same thing for the second one, so name that two. And now we just need to add some artificial camera movement. To do that, I'm gonna use the transform effect and drag that onto the first nested layer. Turn off the shutter angle to 360, that way it has the most amount of blur. And then I'm gonna keyframe the scale and the position, basically to the last frame and zoom in a little bit. Let's do like 115 and just frame them up a little bit better and then drag it to the last frame and then you can just copy and paste that transform effect if you go to the first frame and it should do a similar look let's make the zoom a little bit more aggressive on both of these i brought it from 115 to 135 and to add a little bit extra motion i'm going to go ahead and add sapphire shake on to the nested layer as well but i'm going to drag it above like i said the order does change everything so i'm going to bring it above Bring the amplitude to something like 0.3 and maybe the frequency to 3. That way it's just a little less noticeable, but it still has a little bit of that shake. I'm going to paste it onto this layer and then make sure to drag that above as well. And it's really not even that noticeable, but I think it does help a lot actually. And then to sell this effect, I'm going to do the same thing for this. Let's go ahead and have the paper flash kind of. So the first five frames of this clip, I want it to be changing paper styles. So I'm going to drag on one, two, three or five pieces of paper and it's not going to do anything right off the start that's because we need to add the texturize effect back on i'm actually just going to go in the nested sequence and copy the texturize effect and then go ahead and paste it on the clip that way it has the same properties and then i'm going to drag it all the way to the top actually right underneath flicker and i'm actually not even really liking how that flicker is looking so i'm just going to go ahead and use the same values from the first two clips at 0.5 amplitude and then the random frequency 75. Actually, I'm gonna even bump it down a little bit more and bring it all the way to the bottom. I think it would fit a lot better if you had a song going to it, but for right now, it's just kind of looking a little off to me. Another thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is go to the halftone layer and I'm gonna go and start the color off somewhere around here. So it kind of matches those first few frames like these frames here. And then I'm gonna go five frames to the right, keyframe that color at the start and then keyframe the color to the final color you want. That way it kind of just blends a little bit better. You can do it for the second color as well. And then I'm just gonna add one solid paper rip to this bottom layer. And if you're shooting on a tripod, it's going to be attached to the image, kind of like these still images are. So that's why I really like that when you go ahead and add the digital movement in post. For our case, it's a handheld clip, so we're not gonna have that ability. Let's go ahead and name this three and then add one final transform effect onto it. Drag that onto the nested sequence. And I'm gonna scale and position and go all the way to the end and let's bring it in and down. Just like that. And then what I like doing is since that first five frames has the paper changing and the colors are changing, let's go ahead and go a little bit more than halfway through the clip. Keyframe the position and scale and then go to that first five frames and drag that position and scale there. The majority of the movement happens in the first five frames, and then it kind of moves a little bit after. And then I'm gonna make sure to bring that shutter angle up to 360 so we get that motion blur, and then render that up. And then one last effect I would add on just to kind of sauce it up a little bit more is an adjustment layer with some RSMB. That's just gonna give it a little bit more smoother of motion. It's a plugin that I recommend a lot. I'm gonna drag it onto the adjustment layer and then maybe make the blur amount something like one. And then you can see it makes the transition a little smoother, adds a little bit more blur, and just gives it a cool look in my opinion. So we can kind of compare between the one that I did before the tutorial and one after. Every single time it's gonna look a little bit different, especially depending on your clips. So don't copy the exact values that I'm using. 
and uh, just play around with a lot of the texturized effects in Premiere, Sapphire, Universe, all these different plugins and effects are gonna give you different looks. You know, I'm excited to see what you guys kind of come up with using these concepts. Kind of play this again. The first one, and then that's the second one. The, f the first one I had two different still frames and then it went to a normal clip. And then this one, I actually decided to do one still frame and then the still frame as it transitions in. I think that, I think it actually looks a little weird now that I'm looking back at it. If you just replace that with another image, it would uh, I think make the effect a little smoother. But I still don't think it looks bad, but it almost looks like it's repeating the clip here. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you made it all the way to the end, like always, I do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, follow me on social medias. If you wanted to check out my texture pack or any of my packs and presets, I'll have my website linked down below. It's a really good way to support the channel and get some cool looks as well. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it.